Hello everyone, welcome back to Xcoding with Alvian. In the previous tutorial, we have successfully built an iOS news app using Swift UI 3 and News API. The app provides several main features such as filtering the news based on the categories, search an article using the search bar here, and bookmark an article so we can view it in the staff articles list. In this tutorial, we are going to continue to focus on adapting the existing news app to maximize the user experience on iPadOS. iPadOS runs on tablet, which provides much larger screen real estate compared to an iPhone app. We don't want to just slap the UI of an iPhone app to the iPad. It will be a waste of opportunity to our users. So, what is the most common US UX design pattern of an app when running on iPad. Let's see uh, Apple provided apps here on iPad. First, let's open context. As you can see here, there's a list of menu here on the left side. Whenever we select another item, it will be shown here at the right side. Let's try another app, Shortcuts. Yeah, this is the same. UI pattern and finally let's open settings this is the same this is the sidebar list with the detail view and let's go back to our app so I can explain in more detail so basically this design pattern is called split view master detail navigation by Apple the master view provides a sidebar list of main menu items that can be selected. Then it will show the content of the selected item in the detail view. The sidebar list can be expanded or collapsed using the sidebar button item here. So we can uh, show the content maximizing the large screen size. And when we with the device on portrait mode, the sidebar list will be shown as an overlay. On iPhone, we prefer to use list with one item per row to display collections of data, as people mostly prefer to use their device on portrait orientation. On iPad, using grid with adaptive number of items per row is preferred, so we can show more contents to the user. In this case, when I expand or collapse, the number of items will be different, right? Here it shows 4 items per row and 3 items per row when it's expanded. Another powerful feature of iPad OS is the split view multitasking, which can be used to show multiple apps simultaneously at the same time. Let me show, show it to you here. I can trigger it here using this button at the top. Let me select this one and let me open the context app. Here our app is shown as a floating app using the compact screen size class. So the UI is very similar to an iPhone app. Here we show a tab view at the bottom. And we can also resize this here. to take two, three of the screen width or resize it back to the compact size. So we need to make our app to be capable on adapting the system provided screen size at the runtime. And let me show you another example when using an iPhone Pro Max here. So when I rotate the device to landscape, the system will adapt to, to the regular horizontal size class and in this case it will show the grid it is adaptive and it will be showing the sidebar list menu as an overlay because if you see here the screen width on of an iPhone Pro Max on landscape it's quite similar with the screen width of an iPad on portrait so in this tutorial, we will add the UI adaptivity. 
here are the main topics that we will learn along the way. So first, we are adding the stimulus UI adaptivity based on the runtime value of the system. User interface size class, compact or regular size. Our UI should dynamically adapt based on the system provided horizontal size class here. So we are not going to use a hard coded type of the device or even hard coded number of screen sizes. Then we'll implement the split view master detail navigation on the regular horizontal size class. Also, we add the grid list view to show the list of articles here. So we can display more contents to the user on the iPad. Then we are going to also to learn on how to use the iPad popover presentation controller here to display the native iOS share sheet. And finally, we are going to learn on how to provide seamless stat restoration when the users transition between the regular and compact size. So here, when I'm, for example, when I select search here and I rotate my device to change the size class, it will show the correct selected menu item, which is the search. Also, when I rotate it back to portrait, it will, be, it will show the search tab. Also, the same. On an iPad here, when I select search here and I change the size class, it should provide a seamless state restoration. So, okay, that's basically the thing that we are going to learn. So, to begin this project, you should at least download the latest Xcode 13 beta. For this video, I'm using Xcode 13 Beta 2. You can also start the continue the project using the previous code if you follow the previous tutorial, or you can also download the starter the starter code from the project GitHub repository that I provided at the description below. So without further ado, let's open the Xcode and let's start coding. So let's move on to the first task, which is to create the split view master detail navigation. So basically here, this is the content view of our current news app. As you can see at the root level, we have a tab view with three tab items, news, search, and set articles. So basically we need to retrieve the current horizontal user interface size class and then based on the value we are going to return the appropriate view so whether it's compact or regular so to retrieve the environment we can just use this environment property wrapper and then for the key path we need to specify horizontal size class let's make this private far with the name of horizontal size class inside the body we can just use switch statement passing the horizontal size class property for regular case we are going to for now just return a placeholder with the text of set bar content and then for the default compact view Let's return the current tab view. Okay. To make this more modular, I think we should move out the content for regular and the content for the tab view into a separate Shift UI view file. So let's do that. Inside the views folder, first let's create the Shift UI view, tab content view. And for this, we can just copy the content for the default compact size and then 
declare the tab content view here. Make sure to pass that in the body of the tab content view. And for the regular size class, which is the set bar content, let's create another CUI view. Give it a name of site bar content view. Let's just show a placeholder text sidebar content okay make sure to also refer to this sidebar content view in the content view dot swift file i think we should try this to make sure everything still work uh, especially on the compact size it should show the tab content view to test this we need to use the iphone pro max simulator so we can simulate the landscape orientation that triggers the change to regular size class. Let me run it. Okay, so this is the portrait with the compact size class. And now let me rotate the device. Nice. For the horizontal regular size class, it is correctly showing this sidebar content view. Now let's move on to the next task, which is to implement the set bar list content view. Okay, let's move on to the implementation of the set bar content view. Set bar content view. But before we implement the body for the view, let's create a model representation for the menu items in the set bar list. Inside the models folder, create a new Swift file, give it a name of menu item and declare an enum with the type of menu item. The menu item enum has three cases search, and second one is save, and the third one is category. For category, it will have the associated value of this category enum that we created before and now let's declare several computed properties the first one is the text this will help us later when we want to show the text inside the label now let's use the switch self for search just return search Save, save, and for category, we can access the category the tax value. Okay, now let's move to system image. This is to return the appropriate string for the SF symbol. Let's also use self, switch self. For search, we are going to use the magni buying glass string for set we are going to return bookmark string and for category let's retrieve it from the looks like the category enum doesn't have this so let's go to the category enum file and here let's also declare a computed property system image with a type of string. Inside, we just declare switch self. It will provide the completion. This is new in Xcode 13. And for general, we're going to use the newspaper string for business. We're going to show building.2. And for technology, we're just using desktop computer. And for entertainment, we use TV, sports, sports, court, science, wave dot three dot right. And for health, return cross. In case you are wondering where do I get this value, you can download the SF symbol app. 
from the Apple Developer Center. And here you can just check the system profile SF symbol string. If you want to change the icon related to the category, you can just choose anything that you want here. Okay. So let's go back to the menu item. And here for the system image, we can just return category dot system image. And we also need to make this conform to cache iterable so we can use all cases to retrieve all the cases so here for the cases we cannot synthesize the default cases because we have one associated value right so here we need to implement it by ourselves so all cases in this case we can just return an array of search comma save plus category enum dot all cases let's also create an extension for the category here category and then we create a static for menu items that return array of menu item here we can just use all cases dot map and then return the category menu item passing the category instance which is this dollar zero because this will loop each cases of the category and inside this menu item all cases we can just return category dot menu items i think this should conform to the cache iterable protocol now let's move on to the next conformance which is the identifiable we need to declare a id computed property and for the identifier let's just use string as the type in this case we just use switch self for each case for search we return search for self save and for category we use category dot raw value this will be unique for each of the cases I think uh, this is all for the menu item model. Now let's move on to the sidebar content and implement the body. So for the sidebar content view, how can we show the split view master detail navigation? To do that, we need to make sure the root view for the content for the app is the navigation view. We show use navigation view. And the first view inside the navigation view will be the master view. In this case, it will be the list. And the second one will be the detail view, which will be shown initially. To navigate to each item that will be selected in each row, we will wrap each row inside the list using a navigation link. Okay, so let's just implement this. First, let's declare a list. Based on the UI, as you can see, the we have these two items at the top, which is save and search. So let's use for each, passing the array of menu item dot save and menu item dot search. And then inside the for each, we need to return the navigation link. And for that, let's create a another private file as this will be also reused for the other row and give it a name of navigation link for menu item okay the parameter will be item and the return value is uh, the opac view and let's declare navigation link using this destination label and for the destination let's also create a private function using a free builder here and give it a name of private func view for menu item here we are going to use switch statement to return the appropriate view based on the selected menu item so here we can just use switch 
item. Okay. For the search case, let's return the search tab view for now. And uh, for the save one, we'll return the bookmark tab view. And for category, let's return the new tab view. Okay. Let's just ignore this category for now. So here we can just use view for menu item to pass to the navigation link destination initializer. Passing the item. And for the label, we can declare label view, the standard label view. And we are going to use this one. Create a label with system icon image and a title generated from a string. Okay. For the title, we can just use the item dot text and the system image item dot system image. Here we can just call this inside the for each navigation link for menu item, passing the menu item here using this dollar zero syntax figure. Okay, let's try to build and run. Okay, no big error now. Based on the UI on the list, you can see that we have another section. So to declare a section, we can just use this section. And we have a header. For the header, let's just pass text, categories. For the content inside the section, let's also use for each, right? And in this case, we can use the category, all the category menu items that we created before using an extension. Here we can also use this navigation link for menu item, passing the menu item. And let's also declare the title, navigation title for the app. In this case, I'm going to give it a name of Axia News. And also for the list, let's use the setbar list style by assigning it to the list style modifier. Okay, so for the initial data view, let's just declare a new staff view. Okay, now we need to build and run and try this. Let's change the simulator to iPad Pro 12.9 inch here and build and run. Okay, as you can see here, it is successfully show the Set bar menu list here, and the default detail view the is the new step view. Currently, the layout is broken, so just ignore it. This is broken because currently inside the new step view, it also has its own navigation view. So we will be fixing that later. So now let's try to tap another view, another item, search, okay, and save, okay. It is working as expected. So let's move on to the next task to fix all these tab views navigation. So we need to basically just remove all the navigation view for the regular horizontal size class. Okay, so the first step will be the new tab view. Let's navigate to new tab view dot swift. As you can see here. The step has its own navigation field that wraps the content. So this is broken when we are using the horizontal regular size class. So for now, let's just remove this out. Okay. Also in the bookmark tab view. Here, remove the navigation field. Okay. And finally, in the search tab view. Okay. And let's try this using the iPad Pro simulator. Okay. Now it doesn't look good, but yeah, at least it is not broken, right? As you can see. Because currently it is using a standard list, right? We'll fix that later by using a grid for regular horizontal size class. 
So now let's also try this on iPhone 12 Pro Max, right? Especially the using the portrait orientation. Hmm. Currently it's broken, right? As you can see, there is no title and there is no navigation view. So let's switch that. Let's move to tab content view. That's Swift file. So this is basically we just need to wrap each of the tab item using a navigation view. Do it for all the three tab items. Okay, now let's try to build and run. Okay, the navigation view is shown now. Show the test for the search tab and the set tab. Okay, everything looks good. Now let's move on to the next task. For the next task, we'll be fixing another issue. So basically here, as you can see here, we can select these menu items and it will show the appropriate detail view based on the selected menu item. This works for save, search, top headlines, right? But let's say I want to change here, selecting business, technology, or inner category. As you can see, this is not working. It is still showing the top headlines category category content. So what is basically the issue here? Okay, so to debug the issue, let's navigate to the sidebar content view. Inside this view view menu item, this will be returned whenever user tap on the associated menu item. And for the category here, as you can see, we haven't used this associated value of category to pass this to the new step view. And let's see the new step view. How can we pass this? Okay, it has this article news view model initializer. Okay, this is initialized using a default value. So basically, we need to pass the category and articles. There are two ways using a binding or using an initializer. Let me show you how we can pass that using an initializer. And let's create an initializer with the value of articles containing the array of article. Let's make this optional with the default value of nil and category. Let's provide a general as the default value. And let's just assign the article news VM with the article news new model. Let's remove this default value. Okay. Let's pass the articles. Let's pass the category. Okay. Let's see. Okay, there's an error here. Cannot assign to property article news VM is a get only property. So basically, as you can see, this article news PM property is a state object property wrapper. So basically, we cannot just initialize the article news, news view model instance to this property. To handle this situation, we need to use this self dot article news VM. So this is the internal property that will be used by the property wrapper. As you can see, the type is state object article news view model so let's use this self dot underscore article news view model and then we need to use that object initializer passing the wrap value which is the article news view model okay let's try to build and run okay build fail there's an error here in the preview static property so we cannot use this initializer we need to use the new one and let's just pass the articles as a stop using a stop article dot preview data okay 
let's try again okay build succeeded but we need to update the sidebar content view here so we need to pass the category then the user select a new menu item okay let's try to build and run top headlines let me tap business okay nice it is working technology science health okay the detail view is updated based on the selection of the category from the master list now let's move on to the next task which is to implement the grid view inside the article list we need to navigate to the article list view so this is basically the view that we are using to render the list of articles inside the news tab view and also inside the bookmark tab view so we're going to make the adjustment inside this article this view first we need to add the environment property wrapper to get the horizontal size class Let's, let's make it as a private property horizontal size class now basically what we are going to do is here based on the value of the horizontal size class inside the body we are using the stem strategy as we are using the content view before so for the horizontal regular size class we are going to return the lazy fee grid and for the default compact size class, we are using this current list view. To do that, let's create a private property. Let's declare it as a using view builder. Give it a name of private var root view. And with a type of opac view. Here, we just need to use the horizontal size class using the switch statement in case of regular and in, and in case of default compact size let's move this out into a separate property list view okay move this out cut and paste this and let's just return the root view inside the body and for the default compact one we are just going to return the current list view for the regular one let's declare another private property give it a name of grid view with the type of opac view and here we just need to declare it here for regular and let's just use a place order read view okay now let's make sure this is still working without blocking the current compact size class to do that let's just try to build and run using the iphone pro max okay okay the article list view still show the default list view in compact size and whenever we rotate it here it will show the grid view this is the current placeholder text that we put now let's move on to implement the grid view okay so let's remove this placeholder inside the grid view and declare a scroll view And to display the grid, we are going to use this lazy vertical grid. This is a container view that arranges its child used in a grid that grows vertically, creating items only as needed. So it will be much efficient in terms of memory usage. Okay, so here we need to pass the columns containing the array of grid item. So in this case, I want to make our grid to have a flexible adaptive number of items per row 
in this case i'm going to use the adaptive grid item and i'm going to set the minimum width of our grid item to be 300 and i'm not going to limit the maximum width so with this the we should be able to have adaptive number of items inside our vertical grid so for example when we are using an iphone 12 pro max it will show two vertical two articles per row and when we are using i what pro 11 inch on landscape it will show maximum number of three items per row and with ipad pro 12.9 inch it will show maximum number of one four article per columns okay now we need to pass the content that we will render in the grid and before i forget let's also pass uh, set the spacing for the grid item to be eight okay try to build make sure there's no error so inside this specific grid i want to render the data using for each so basically i can just pass the articles here for now i'm going to use the current article row view passing the article now let's try to build and run using the ipad pro simulator to see the results okay the it is rendering the items but if you see closely the current layout is a bit of broken here also the ui is not consistent here so what we want to achieve is basically to have a similar ui like this so our article item will be shown in a card like container with a rounded corner radius as well as shadow here this looks nice right so this is the article row view that we are going to implement and we need to make some changes to meet this design requirement okay let's go back to our articles view to implement this okay so now let's navigate to the article row view dot swift this will be the view that related to the grid item first we need to declare an environment property wrapper passing the horizontal size class but for horizontal size class and next with using this environment property wrapper so basically when the grid item is shown the horizontal regular size class we want to limit the height of the item to be same for each item inside the row we need to pass an absolute height to the frame so here as you can see currently for the image we are using a relative height it can be with the minimum height of 200 and maximum height of 300 this works really good uh, for the standard list but for our grid item this will not work as we want to have the item to have the same height inside a row so to handle this let's create a file private extension for the view and let's clear a view builder method here let's give it a name async image frame that accept a horizontal size class parameter user interface size class that return the view this will be similar to a modifier but in this case we just use the switch statement on the horizontal size class and for the regular and default compact for regular we just return self dot frame and pass an absolute height of 
180 180 for the image and for the default compact one we can just copy this use it as a default value okay so we don't need this return so this is a view builder okay there's no build error now we need to use this async image frame passing the horizontal size class that's it for the image okay this is an optional value so let's provide a default value just pass compact okay now uh, we need to add additional spacer between the description text and the h tag containing the caption text and the button right as the head will be fixed on the regular screen size we just use horizontal size class dot equal to regular in this case we are spacer this will make sure to push this horizontal stack to be always at the bottom as you can see in here okay this is the basically the change that we need to make inside the article row view now let's go back to the article list view so here inside the article row view we need to add several additional modifiers first one is the height for the grid item let's pass 360 and next let's also set the background to color ui color system background for the background color of the card and to make the rounded corner radius let's use the mask modifier passing rounded rectangle with the corner radius of 8 for shadow let's use the shadow modifier passing 4 for the radius and finally let's add additional padding to the bottom okay set it as 4 and for our lazy grid let's also add padding to all the edges and for the scurry we also set the background color to system secondary background color uh, secondary system group background okay now let's try to build and run using the ipad pro simulator let's see whether this works or not Okay, mm. it is working, but as you can see here, it is broken. Like there is no spacing here. It's not consistent, right? Here we have the edge spacing. Here we don't have it. And for the most part, it's okay now. But we need to fix this. Now let's fix that issue now we get back to the article row view so basically we need to make sure to limit the width of the grid item so to do that we can just wrap our view inside a geometry reader okay let's try it geometry reader proxy and let's wrap it the other fee stack here it inside the geometry reader so basically geometry reader is a this will return the flexible preferred size to its parent layout okay now let's try to build and run okay now Spacing looks good. It is working as expect, expected. And now let's fix another issue here. Let's set this opacity to 0 0.6 to make it darker. This looks good, right? This is the fairly similar to the design that we want to achieve here. Okay but here 
we cannot just use this geometry reader for the standard list inside the compact regular size class compact size inside the compact size class this will broke as geometry reader needs an absolute height and on the compact size we use relative height so basically we also need to handle this using a switch statement here so let's create a private method view builder and give it a name of private font content view let's pass the proxy and make this as optional this will be usable later when we want to implement the popover presentation for our share sheet in the ipad so let's make it optional and let's copy this this content view proxy method okay now we can just use switch statement on the horizontal size class in case of regular let's just default in case of regular we want to wrap it inside a geometry reader proxy content view passing the proxy and for the default we just want to show the content view without passing any proxy try to build and run okay make sure everything still work okay nice now let's try using the iphone 12 portrait mode for the tab view okay fix the orientation okay still working as expected here we have a relative height for each of the this item Okay, nice. So we have implemented the grid view for the article list here. For the next task, let's make sure all the feature, for example, tapping on the article grid item and sharing article, bookmarking article, still work. Let's try, let's use the iPad Pro. Okay. Let me tap on an article grid item. Okay, doesn't work because we haven't add the tap gesture here. Let me add on tap gesture and set the article selected article to the article. Try again. this okay the safari view is presented using the model sheet presentation now let's try to bookmark an item an article two let's check it inside the save one okay it successfully bookmarked and persisted the articles next one is the share sheet button Let's try to tap. Boom, it crashed, right? UI popover presentation UI popover presentation controller should have no nil source view or bar 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 button item set before presentation occurs. So basically to present a UI activity controller share sheet on iPad, we need to use the popover presentation controller. So we need to set the source view or the source rectangle. And in our case, as you can see here, inside the article row view, percent share sheet, we are not doing that. So it crashed the app. So let's fix this. This is going to be pretty simple actually. So basically here now we need to retrieve the root fee controller. Just add a guard statement and retrieve the root fee controller here else we return right let's comment this first 
and basically we just need to set the activity view controller pop over provision presentation controller source view using the root vc dot view this will be the source view and next we need to set the pop pop over presentation controller source rack to the rectangle of the associated grid item card but how can we actually retrieve the rectangle the frame luckily we have implemented the geometry reader proxy before so using this geometry reader proxy we should be able to access the frame in the global space or even local space coordinate so here to fix this is just as simple as adding the geometry proxy let's make this an optional because we are not using it in the compact size class okay here we can just check using the if let statement proxy if this exists we are going to use this assign the source rectangle to proxy frame in global coordinate space okay this will be the frame of the grid item in the view controller view now let's just use the root vc and percent the activity view controller as before okay we need to update this invocation passing the proxy okay so we have the proxy as the parameter here now let's try to build a run okay now let me tap this article hmm nice as you can see now is using the rectangle of this grid item as the anchor point for this share sheet. Let me tap on the another item. Nice. We have successfully uh, implemented this pop over share sheet for sharing the article on an iPad. And I think that's basically it for the grid view. Now let's move on to another task. So for this next task, as you remember, before uh, in the previous video, we implemented pull to refresh mechanism here in our list. But now, when we are using this scroll view with lazy grid, this refreshable does not work. I don't know if this is the current bug inside the IS15 beta SDK, but first we all we need to fix several uh, issues in this regular size UI. So basically, here we don't need this menu item, as user can just select the categories from the sidebar menu. So basically, here as we don't have the pull to refresh, I'm going to replace this. A bar button item to show the menu to be a refresh bar button item so when the user tap on this it will refresh the articles and it will be only applied to the regular horizontal size class now let's move on to the arctic new step view okay so basically here we have this reversible and the navigation bar items this returns the menu for the trailing bar button item so let me create a new private bar private competitive property and give it a name of navigation bar item that return some view let's make this as a view builder so here we need to query the horizontal size class from the environment let's add it again environment horizontal size class that private uh, 
and here we can just use the switch statement horizontal size class regular and default compact and for regular we just need to return the i mean for the compact default one let's return the menu here and remove this private part and for the regular case we're going to return a button using this action label here we just pass reverse task and for the label let's just use an image system name uh, arrow dot clockwise to indicate this is a refresh bar button item and set the image scale to large okay let's change this to navigation bar item Okay, it shows this bar button item and it refreshes the content when we tap on it. Now let's change it to the regular size compact size class. Okay, still show the menu that show the category selection. Nice. Working as expected. Now let's move on to the next task, which is to check the this save menu item. Make sure it's still working. Nice. So we get this grid view because here we are also using the article list view to render the save articles. Let's try to search Wimbledon. Nice. Still working so i think we don't need to make any changes in the bookmark tab view it, it is working as expected okay now let's try to test the search menu item here okay nice the result search list is shown let me tap on one of the item here okay it's successfully search apple m1x okay let's try to okay the suggestion is shown when the this is on focus the search bar let me tap on one of the item here ps5 okay successfully shows the results of ps5 now another thing i want to test is the manual search query let's search for COVID. Enter. Hmm, there's a bug here. Looks like the search suggestion is overlaying these results. So let's fix this issue. So basically, here we need to go to the search tab view. I think more, the most probable uh, root cause is the cause of the search over, right? Um, let's see here whether there's a dimensional parameter that we can pass. Okay, this is, there's a placement, placement parameter where the search will show attempt to be placed based on the containing view hierarchy. Hmm. Okay, the default failure, I think it's automatic. For the horizontal reverse size class, we need to. Let's use navigation bar drawer to test. Okay, search again. COVID. Okay, now it is working as expected. Hmm, nice. But let's make sure this behavior is only applied when we are in the horizontal regular size class. I don't want to block anything. On the current compact size class implementation. So uh, let's use the horizontal size class. Make it private as always. And here we can just check horizontal size classes equal to regular. We return navigation board drawer else we make set it to automatic okay it should not block any implementation on the current compact 
success class. So everything is working here. The search feature is working nicely. Okay, so before we move on, let's also test the swipe. This swipe here still working. Nice. Let's test the clear button. Okay, everything works. Now let's move on to the next task. Okay, so for now, our app basic functions are working as expected without any issue, but there are some things that we can improve. So for example, let me kill the app and show it to you and open this. So this is our default detail view, the top headlines. But if you see here, it is not being highlighted inside the sidebar menu list item. So let's try to fix this by using a selection binding to the list. Now go back to the sidebar content view. And to add the binding, let's declare a state for give it a name of selected menu item ID. And the value will be the menu item dot ID, which is a string. Why I choose it uh, to store the string? Because it will help us later when we want to implement the state restoration. Because we will store the string inside the user defaults. For now, let's just pass the selection. A selected menu item ID binding. And we also need to associate each navigation link with that menu item using this navigation link. We need to add tag here. We can pass the item.id and make sure to pass the binding selected menu item ID. So whenever the user tab on the row, it will update this with the latest tab. Okay. Now let's try this. Right. Hmm. Still doesn't work. Maybe we need to comment this out and just provide the default selection from here. No item dot category general dot id. Let's try this. Okay, this is working. But still not highlighting the default selection another thing is let's try it on portrait hmm now the default detail view is empty because we commented this out right let's try to uncomment this okay this is being shown tap back hmm it locked back the top headlines page twice. And as you can see, the default selection is still not being highlighted. So I think we need to do some kind of hack here. Because I'm not sure whether this, this is intended by Apple or not, as we already provide a default selection. So let's try to find another solution. So I have did some research before and found this really nice article from lostmo.com by Natalie Panferova. So she basically created the CVUI navigation list view series. As you can see here, the other one, the default selection, programmatic list view style. This one is the programmatic navigation. So the main idea in here is to create a hidden navigation link with an empty view as the content. So here, she check the selected item ID binding if it is exist and then if not it just return nil so it won't be rendered at all there's no navigation and then if it is exist he created the navigation link with the destination detail field related to the binding selected binding okay so that's basically the trick here and for each of each of the item on the row we won't be providing the navigation link instead we are going just to provide a button that will update the selected menu item id with the selected item on the row i think we can try this approach and see whether this is going to work or not okay now let's go back to the sidebar content view let's declare a view builder and a private var navigation link 
this will generate the, navi the hidden navigation link and use some view so here let's check the selected menu item id value so if it is this is exist this is string we need to convert this to menu item okay so to convert that let me create a helper extension here uh initializer let's make this optional and we'll pass the menu item dot id let's also pass this an optional okay here uh we can use switch statement on the id so the first case is the menu item search id if this is matching with this right the string we're just going to use the set the self as search next one is the it is matching with the save dot id set the self as save and for the default category let's check the id right so this is optional and then let's try to initialize the category so this enum is a type of string so we can pass this raw value id so if this conversion succeed we just set the self as category we pass the associated value and then else we can just return nil so this is available initializer for the menu item that accepts the menu item id and we can use it here now it's just that this menu item we can just use menu item okay and pass the selected menu item id this is optional right okay so if this is exist then this is the menu item that is being selected basically here we just want to declare the navigation link so for the destination we just can pass the view for menu item passing the selected menu item and for the label we just used empty view we don't want it to be rendered in the sidebar menu list okay and we also need to add tag okay which is the selected menu item id and the make sure to pass the binding selection selected menu item id okay so i think it requires this to be non-optional right okay i think for this let's pass a default one menu item category general dot id okay should now build successfully so we need to reference here the navigation link here right and we need to remove this detail we don't need it right and now let's try this hmm it is broken it's not showing the set bar menu list okay she said that we need a we need to wrap the list inside a system to make this work okay we will also wrap our list row in a button so that it's introduce the navigation link okay so first let's just wrap this in a system nice it show the side by button list what we still need to handle when the user taps on the button here we use a navigation link but we need to update that so let me create another func here accept a view builder private func give it a name of list row pass the item menu item and return some view this is this will be the list row so inside here let's just declare a button action the action we just 
assign this selected menu item ID with the item dot ID. And for the label, we just use this label. And for the title, we can use item dot text. And image, we can use uh, item dot system image. Okay. Let's more update this to use the new one. This row. This row. Let's try to build it. Oh, let's just let's just make this. We don't need to pass the parameter. Okay, this works now. Top headlines. Okay, we, but you can see the image is not being rendered. But let's try to tap on one of the item. Hmm, nice. Still, it works, right? So as we are using a custom behavior here, we are not using navigation link for each row. I think we need to provide our own custom style as we didn't get the system highlighted style by default. So, ah. That's why the image is not being rendered before. This needs to be system image. Try this first. Okay, the image are rendered. So first we need to know right before we can style this whether this row is being selected or not. Let's create a constant and check whether the item ID for this row is equal to the selected menu item ID binding. Then we can just set the foreground color of the image and text here based on this value. If it is selected, we can just uh, use white color. If not, just pass mail. It will use the default color. And for the background, we need to use this list row background modifier. Check whether it is selected. If yes, we set the background color as the accent color of the system. If not, we set the color to clear. Let's try. Mm, nice. Now the default list selection is working. Mm, very, very nice trick. Let's try and portrait and uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's working. But still not the same here as this is not using a rounded corner radius for the default. Uh, for the list row background, we can fix this pretty easily. So here we just need to add a mask here. So let's wrap here. Let's wrap this using a mask and passing the rounded rectangle with the corner radius of eight. Let's try this. Hmm. Now it's this looks perfect. But there's a bug in here, right? When we change these categories to business, technology, entertainment, sports, it doesn't update the detail view. Hmm. Interesting. How can we fix that? So I think as we are using this uh, hidden navigation link to handle the default selection and wrapping it inside a HZ stack, if UI is not able to detect the changes when we change the category. So how can we make it work? I think there are two approaches. One is to make this category, passing this category as a binding, but this will require too much changes from outside. So let's try to just use another approach. So basically uh, the way if UI handles updating for a few is based on the identity, right? There are two identity, whether it's a explicit identity that we can use by passing the ID here. And the other one is the structural identity. So that is really enforced by the compiler based on the return type of the view. And it should work uh, out of the box without us having to do anything, as long as we don't wrap our view inside an any view. It should work, right? Because the compiler will know the type of the structural identity for all the 
overall view hierarchy of the app. So for this, uh, oh, also I want to uh, recommend you to watch the demystify CVI video from the WWDC 21 session. So the CVI engineers really explain that in detail. I've provided the link at the description below if you're interested. So for this, we can just solve this by passing the explicit identity by using this category, right? So whenever the category changes, the identity of the new step view will changes. And I think this will update the view. Okay. So top headlines, the default one, business. Nice. Now the CVUI is able to detect the changes because the identity changes, right? And you can it just it is just working as before. Nice. We have implemented this default list selection using our custom programmatic navigation. Thanks to the Natalie Panvarova article. Okay, now let's move on to the next task, which is to implement the state restoration for the sidebar menu list. So basically what I want to achieve is whenever users select on this menu item and then kills the app and open the apps again, it should remember the last menu item selected by the user and then show it in the detail view. So let's try to implement that feature. So we are going to use the app storage property wrapper here. As you can see, this is new in iOS 14, a property wrapper that reflects a value from usual defaults. So it's going to be persisting the value inside the usual defaults. Okay. And it also invalidates a view on a change in a value that in that usual default. Okay. Now let's go back here and let's change this state to use that app storage. We need to pass a key to persist in the usual defaults. Okay. And let's not assign the default value. Okay. But now we need a state binding, right? To do that, I'm going to create a proxy binding, a computed proxy binding. Private var. I'm going to give it a name of selection with the type of binding menu item dot id optional and inside this computer property i'm going to return a binding property wrapper with using this get and set initializer for the getter i'm just going to return the selected menu item id but i also want to provide a default value in case you usually open the app for the first time in that case, I want to show the top headlines using this category general.id. And for the setter, here, I need to update this, right? Set the menu item app storage. But I only want to update it if the value exists, as this is optional, right? Okay. Set the menu item ID with the menu item. Let's name this as menu item ID. Okay, now we need to make some changes here. As before, we are using this to bind in the view. So let's find selected menu item. Okay, this one. Let's change this to selection. We don't need to provide the dollar sign as this is already a binding type. Okay. This one also. Let's check this. This is should be the selection. But as this is the binding, we need to use the wrap value to get the underlying value. Okay. And now. When we set this, we want to use the selection. We need to assign it to the wrap value. As this is binding, right? We need to access the underlying value. Okay. Let's try to find another reference here. 
here we also need to use the selection wrap value okay and for the tag we need to use this one let's let the item id and for this let's use selection this is already correct 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 we need to update this to use selection also okay so we only have these three reference to the selected monotone item id here in the actual our property wrapper and in the binding proxy where we get the value from here and update the value when we set the new value okay so the other binding reference is to use this selection proxy okay now we can remove this we don't need this as this is really non-optional i think that we make the mistake before it should be we should always use this now let's try to build and run to see whether it's going to persist the selected menu item okay so the default one is still top headlines let's say i change that to technology okay now let me try to kill that open it again nice it successfully performed the state restoration and here as you can see the last selected item is technology and it shows the detail view successfully related to the technology okay so now we already implemented the state restoration but there's still one thing that we need to fix so basically here this is technology right but when i transition to compact sex class right as you can see here it is selecting the default top headlines so the transition between the compact and regular size class still doesn't work it is not seamless right i select search here right and then i go to the regular size class it is selecting the technology so it doesn't stay in sync between those two size class so now let's try to fix this so let's start by also using an enum to represent the tab menu item and uh, let's go to the models create a new swift file you see it, let's name it as tab menu item okay so this as enum tab menu item and make it make it start a string and here we have three tabs right news search and save okay so here i can just implement identifiable also For the ID, I can just use the self. Return self. Okay. So next, we are also going to add the text that will be shown. You can just use the raw value and make it capitalize. And for the system image to be rendered in the tab item label, going to be string. You switch self news for news we are going to use newspaper for the sf symbol and for search we are going to use magnifying glass and for the safe we are going to use bookmark okay text done system image done now i also want to watch this error okay just ignore that i want to create several helper initializer here so in it here i want it to be menu item menu item id let's just make it optional here 
so i can just use switch here and then i can initialize the menu item okay menu item so here i can check if it is search i can just use initialize this to search if it is save i can initialize this to save and for the default just set it as news okay this will help us later when we want to convert the menu item to the tab menu item okay now we have this another helper method that will help us later is to create a method menu item id and then pass a category which is optional and return the menu item id we just use switch self in case of news we are going to use return the menu item dot category passing the category if this new we we'll just use general and return the id and for search just return menu item dot search dot id and last one is save return menu item dot save dot id okay i think this is all for the tab menu item this will help us later when we want to transform the list menu item to this one okay uh i think i forgot something here let's make this also conform to case iterable protocol so we can retrieve all the cases and let's go back to the tab content view dot swift here and declare a view builder method make it profit and give it a name of view for tab item item tab menu item that returns some view okay let's just use the switch statement for the item in case of news we return the news tab view let's just uh, ignore the category for now let's fix this later and save bookmark tab view and for the search search tab view okay and now we need to update this body here here we can just use the for each as the tab item we already confirmed to case iterable we can just use the l cases to get the all the item and then let's let me move this out here we can abstract this out here we can just use the previous method that created earlier plus this item and for the top item label we can use the item dot text for the system image we can just use item dot system image okay and then we can remove all of this make sure to also set the tag as uh, item okay uh this is the first step so now we also need to implement the app storage here so to do that first we need to do some kind of refactoring let's go to the set bar content view so we can share this across those two views let's copy this okay and then in here change this to binding so we can pass this down and here requires this selected momentum id you can just pass a constant of nil okay now let's go to the content view and declare this app storage at the root level now we can pass this as a binding using the dollar sign selected menu item id okay now let's go to the tab content view declare this also as a binding
okay and pass this also selected menu item id so this app storage will be shared across those two views let's try to build first okay let's also fix this in the preview provide constant value of nil and now we need to also create a proxy binding and inside that binding the type will be a tab menu item and we need to do some transformation from this menu item id to the associated tab menu item okay so first let's create a private var binding with the type of binding tab menu item we don't need to store this as a id because this is not going to be this is going to be converted to this and this is not optional as the tab view selection requires a non-optional value and inside the compute property initialize a binding with a getter and setter okay and inside the binding we can just use this tab menu item using the initializer that accept the menu item that we have created before the menu item id we can just pass this so this will be converted to the tab menu item okay and now for the setter we need to set the selected menu item id with the new value menu item id category so how can we retrieve the category this category will only be applied if the tab menu item type is category right so for that let's create a private var selected category category this will be optional let's declare a menu item and let's also initialize the menu item based on the selected menu item id from the app storage okay now we need to check if the menu item is category type we retrieve the associated value and return the category else we return nil okay and that's how we can associate the category let's pass this selected category but actually i also want to provide a default value here let's provide a default value of general in case this is nil okay now we need to before we can build and run i think we need to pass the selection here selection this binding and also cannot find selection sorry i think we should name this selection in here we need to also pass the selected category okay selected category and just provide the full value of general now let's try again okay now it is showing technology let's change it to the compact size class hmm yeah it is working now nice the restoration is working now let's change this to search okay and then change back to the regular size class nice very very nice transition the state restoration now works between the size class transition wow i love it okay so before i conclude this tutorial there is one final bug that we need to fix so here if i go to the new step view in the compact size and to change the category here i can tap on this bar button item it will show the menu here let me say i change this to entertainment right and then i'm going to transition to the regular size class as you can see it doesn't work right 
So we also need to make some update to persist the selected category in Compact S class when user selecting a new category from the menu item. So to do that, we need to go to the article news view model. So basically in here, we also need the access to the app storage. And for that, let me grab that in the content view. Okay. So let's declare this as private. And this is the property that we use whenever we update the category. So basically, we just need to create the did set. Here, so this will be triggered whenever the new value is set, and then here we just check if the new value category is not the same with the current value. Okay, so only if it is not the same, we are going to update the menu item ID using the menu item dot category passing the fetch text token dot category dot id okay so this should update the app storage when the user select from the menu inside the bar button item let's try this let's go to the compact size class okay now let me select science here and then let's go back to the regular size class. Nice, it is working as expected. So I think we have fixed all the bugs for this app. So before I conclude this video, I just want to point out several things that we have learned building this. So first, we have successfully built the adaptive user interface for the news app. So this is really device agnostic. It will adapt to the user interface size class, whether it's horizontal here or compact. Or here, when I rotate this Chromex device, it will automatically adapt to the regular size class with the sidebar menu overlay. So with this, we don't need to worry about the type of the iOS device that our user prefer because our app will work regardless of the device. You can also download the completed project from the GitHub repository at the description below. So if you have any issue, you can just try to check your code and compare it to the final project. So I encourage you all to not just following this tutorial, but to try this also for yourself. So any other iOS app, maybe iPhone app that you have created, also try to make it adaptive to the regular horizontal size class so we can provide the best user experience to to our users okay i think that's it for this video so until the next one keep the lifelong learning goes on and goodbye